I'm home caught, she's standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? I'm home caught, she's standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? They ain't believing me in the beginning. Who wanna hang around now they see me winning? I'm home caught, she's standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? What's up, world? It's your boy, Big Court, from the Holding Court Podcast, and today's episode is sponsored by none other than Rap Noodles. You already know what it is, the classic icon ramen noodles. You know what I'm saying? This is the creamy chicken gumbo flavor, one of my personal favorites. So, you know, we grew up in the hood eating noodles, you know what I mean? What are we talking about ramen? Forget ramen. Get your rap noodles, you know what I'm saying? So, it's no limit to our success. You already know what it is. Be body body, ride it, ride it with the rap icon rap noodles you already know what it is salute all right all right all right shit here today welcome to the holding court podcast you know what i'm saying right now we got the incomparable you know what i'm saying the east coast legend you know actor rapper award-winning history making sticky fingers in the director building. producer writer creator go ahead yeah let them know let them know bro i mean <laughs> yeah how you doing brother I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm good, brother. I'm good, man. You know, that's my co-host, Ken, right there. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Courtney so, uh, and Ken. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Appreciate you coming, bro. Um, Man, I want to start from the beginning, bro. You know, because you, you've been around a long time. You know, you have a... a you making a, me feel young. Yeah, yeah. But you got a rich <laughs> history. You know what I'm saying? You've accomplished a lot, you know. Um, let's start from the beginning. Where you from? Well, I don't mean to be difficult. I'm from Earth. You know, mm-hmm. um, the what region of the earth? NYC. Mm-hmm. Um, region I say NYC, got lived in all of the five boroughs, Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, Manhattan, every place except for Staten. Mm-hmm. You know, even though Onyx is known for being from Queens, I'm mm-hmm. from Brooklyn too. Okay. Yeah. You know? Okay. And so the name Sticky Fingers, well, I mean, I know what it means, but shit. Well, the name was given to me. Yeah. You know, it's not like I made it myself. It yeah. was given to me. And I don't know why they call me Sticky Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, you just used to find shit, probably, huh? There it is. You just found shit. So they said, oh, sticky fingers. How that shit get in my pocket? <laughs> so what was it like growing up? Because, I mean, me and you not too far in age. Um, uh, what was it like growing up during that era? I mean, 80s, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Um, 70s going into the 80s. I mean, at the crack era hit. I mean, it was all hip-hop, you know? Um, I started young, you know, um, I used to go to school in the, in the city, Manhattan. I used to go to DCEP school. We called it Cybertron, but the name of the school was Graphic Communications and Arts. Mm-hmm. I, I went to art and design. I had to take a test to get in there, but it was mad DCEPs and low lights in the school, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I used to cut school mm-hmm. to cut here. I worked in a barbershop. I was yeah. nice. I was like, I was a spectacle. I was 15 years old, but I was nice because I was to art school mm-hmm. doing designs and da da da. You know, um, just streets, you know. Yeah. I grew up fast. Everybody I hung out with was older than me. Mm-hmm. I used to go to adult clubs as a as a teenager, you know, fake ID the whole shit, getting sexually assaulted by grown women in the bathroom. Wow. <laughs> you never reported that shit, huh? Never reported that. Oh, like right. these kids today getting raped. Right, by right. <laughs> right. What's wrong with you? She's trying to give hey, me some brains. Hey, I thought I was the only one that thought that, bro. I was like, man, they don't make kids like they used to. Yeah. I'm thinking, no, I no, wish no. Stephanie had a molest uh, me when I was in fourth grade. But anyway. Well, um, I did have a, a babysitter once. <laughs> All right, we, we'll get into that later. Oh. So you said Decepts, Decepticons? Mm-hmm. Okay, that was a big gang up there. Yeah, New York City. Yeah, and it was the Decepticons. I never joined. Yeah. I just used to run with them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because was... I went to the school. So, you know, you run get run over. Who was the rivals of the Decepticons? Everybody's in their way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because yeah. what was the gangs of that day? Because, see, where I'm from, you know, I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Kansas City. So right. we adopted the West Coast. So it was just Crips and Bloods. And right. Maybe a few GDs and Vice Lords. But I know on the East Coast, y'all had your own set of gangs before I mean... the Bloods and Crips. You know, I mean, I guess growing up, I never really looked at DCEP like it was a gang, but I guess it was a gang. You know what I mean? I, 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 more family and just, you know, um, but, you know, you got DCEPs, low life. Then you got just blatant stick up kids. You right. know what I mean? Right. Which I resonate with too. Um, yeah, but, you know, mm-hmm. single family household, mm-hmm. uh, 
If you wanted it, you had to get it. And yeah. it was that simple. You, you know what I mean? Or you, ain't, or you ain't gonna have it. Yeah, you had to grab it. Or work for it, you know? You're like, look, I ain't gonna make it seem like, you know, I'm a good dude, you know what I mean? Like, look, my first thing I ever did, my mother, she taught me how to uh, forge my birth certificate. Really? And I got a, I got a job at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I think it was like, uh, you had to be like 16, mm -hmm. I was like 14. Mm -hmm. Forged my birth certificate, got a job at McDonald's, you know? Um, it's just mad shit, you know. Mm -hmm. When I first when I first started cutting hair, um, I took Fredro Starr's hair cutting book, cause I I hadn't, hadn't cut hair at that time. You know, I lived mm -hmm. in Atlanta for like a year. Mm -hmm. We left New York, cause it was crazy, and went to Atlanta, and I our crib still got robbed type shit. So yeah. we moved back, whatever. Boom. When I came back, Fredro was cutting hair. He was nice, one of the nicest yeah. barbers I ever knew at that time. It was him, and Waterbed. And Fredro had this ill book with all his designs, pyramids and uh, polo signs, a guy in the polo horse, Timberland signs, crazy. So I, I lived in Brooklyn at the time. So I took his book to his barbershop in Brooklyn. I told him, yo, I did these cuts. Give me a job. They like, you did these cuts? Oh, you just, hell, all right, you got a job. Where's the clippers? I told him, bust it. I was like, I ain't got no clippers. They said, all right, don't worry about it. We, we get you some clippers. So I had to call Fredro on water to find out what clippers to buy. At, at this time, at this point in time, I had never cut a fucking hair in my life. Mm. Not even my own. Wow. And I never messed nobody hair up either. Mm. I just, it, I was a natural. I took to it like a fish to water, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yeah, so hustling was just embedded in my bones. Wanting something and getting it done. Making it happen, mm -hmm. you know? And, and on some real wholesome shit. You know, I was raised by a, a good mom, you know what I mean? I don't really, ain't even really know my pops like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I ain't, You got um, siblings? Yes, I do. Okay, how many? Uh, I got two sisters and one brother. Okay, okay. You the middle child? Young? I'm the oldest. You the oldest? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so you had to look after them. You had to... Well, yeah, but I ran away when I was like 15. Where'd so, you go when you ran away? I ran... Uh, I went to Queens, because my mom, she moved us to Jersey at that time, mm -hmm. and I used to still work in a barbershop, so I just had to go to school in Manhattan. Uh, I had moved barbershops by then. First was Brooklyn. And then was Queens. So I go to school in Manhattan, go to barbershop in Brooklyn, hang out in Queens, and to try to get home to Jersey before the bus stop, Damn. which I would miss a lot of times. So I couldn't take this shit, and I just ran away and, you know, lived in Queens, you know yeah. what I mean? And Fredjo's your cousin, right? Yeah, first blood cousin. Oh, okay. okay. <coughs> and Fredjo older? Yeah, he's like 100. Yeah. <laughs> I see he just had a birthday, man. He's had, yo, birthday, he just had a 50th Fredjo. birthday. Yeah. Yeah, happy right birthday there. to Fred. Nigga look like he's 25. I was going to say that. I said that on IG. Mm -hmm. I said, man, happy birthday, OG. Well, we, we, look, I, I was yeah. jeans. We got the Fountain of Youth. You know, we're we going to start selling Fountain of Youth water. Yeah, I don't know what homie eating or what he's smoking or what he drinking. He, mm -hmm. he he look young as hell. That Kush. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he stay burning that. Stay burning. He stay burning. I think he smoke more than Snoop. <laughs> Shout out to Fred. Snoop ain't got nothing on Dro. <laughs> so what, so... I mean, you obviously coming from, you know, the birth of hip hop. I mean, so that had, who did you listen, you know, grow up listening to? Who was your influences? Slick Rick, Big Daddy Kane, Rakim, Run DMC, mm -hmm. fucking KRS One, you name it, you know. Mm -hmm. UTFO, when we first, first started, yeah. you know. UTFO I was a DJ so. first. I was a little kid. I asked my mother for Christmas for turntables, mm -hmm. you know, the techniques with the mixer, and she got them, but. She got me the turntables with the straight arm, not the swivel yeah. 1200, but I still made it work, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's uh, graduated from there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, spending all that time in the streets, I mean, what was the craziest thing you seen growing up? Like, I seen a lot of crazy everybody. shit. What's one of the ones that stick out your head? Like, one that, that was life altering, that you was like, either I gotta get with this shit, I gotta, I'm gonna be fooled, or I gotta get the fuck away from this shit. Mm. I mean, there's so many, man. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've seen I, I, I seen very a lot of violence in my younger years, and you know I became numb to a lot of things. You right. know, one time we had a club. It's like nighttime. This is in Manhattan. It's not even in the hood. Mm -hmm. And the club is over, and somebody throws a bottle into like a crowd of people. I've seen the whole. I've seen the whole shit. Like mm -hmm. you know, it's probably years and years past. So <clears> he couldn't bring me to court to testify against somebody anyway. And the kid just walks up to the kid and shoots the nigga that threw the bottle. And they're laying on the floor, blood is squirting at his chest like a water fountain. Mm -hmm. I'm across the street, but it's like a one-way street, so it's not that far. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, the police was right there on the same side. They got out their car and ran. Mm. Wow. Took off. You know, they're like, we don't get paid this much. 
they didn't want that smoke, huh? Well, one time we had a, a Basie Park, you know, where Fred used to perform, Coach Jigs, everybody was crazy, right? Mm. So one of Fred dudes, some older dude, he said, yo, y'all, y'all niggas get out of here, man. That nigga over there with the whoop jersey, you about to light this shit up. Yeah, all right, whatever. Right, there's too many bitches here. Mm. Next thing you know, three minutes later, pop, 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 pop. We turn around, the nigga is shooting, it's like leaning on our back. We like, oh shit. You know, it's a it's a um a basketball court to us a fence. Yeah. Everybody trying to fit out that one little door gate mm-hmm. in the fence. You know what I mean? That's when Slammer really started. Cause I went over everybody's head and got the fuck out of here, right? Yeah. Me and Fredro jumped in his LeBaron. He had LeBaron at the time. This was way before uh Def Jam and Onyx and all that shit, mm-hmm. you know. We in the car trying to back up and with Fredro's driving, trying to make a U-turn to get out of here. Why he almost run over the nigga with the gun? <laughs> that nigga turned the gun like this, pointing at Fredro, because he was on the driver's side. Mm-hmm. It would have went through Fredro's head, right to my head. He was like, <laughs> and he drove the gun and took off. Yeah. We looked at each other like, yo. I mean, I could go on for days with moments yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Was y'all ball headed back then? Yes and no. Okay. Well, uh, earlier years, we wasn't. I had I lurked in a barbershop. Yeah. I had every hairstyle you could fucking imagine. You know what I mean? Flat top, Gumby, dreads, <laughs> braids, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And the last haircut you get is the rebel shit. Yeah. Go ahead, take it all off. Yeah. You know? Okay. So what? Where, where did? So what? Who brought the music to your attention to where you were inspired to become an artist? Like, at what point did you say, you know what? I think I can do this shit. I'm listening to Big Daddy Kane and all these artists. I think I can do that. You know how it all started? It all started like um, I would recite. Like for instance, to be a great artist, the first thing you start doing is you start tracing other art. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. You start making. And eventually, you take the tracing paper away. Yep. And you start drawing your own shit. Yep. It was the same thing with music. Mm-hmm. I listen to songs. I recite them. Mm-hmm. I say it better than the person who was saying it said it. Mm-hmm. I knew everything there was about music. Every artist, the verses, this, that, and the other. And then eventually, a natural progression, I started writing my own stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and then that's how I started. Mm-hmm. But I had no aspirations to be an artist. Right. I just was good at it and was doing it. Fred drawing them. Was pursuing record deals and da da da. I was just his young wild cousin because he was living in Queens. Mm-hmm. I was his young wild cousin from Brooklyn, that was on that rah rah bullshit. Mm-hmm. And and every time, listen, every time Fredro had a problem, they didn't want Trop around. That was my name at the time, mm-hmm. Trop, because I was the diffuser, busting niggas in the head with bottles, wild the hell, fuck the shit up for him, yeah. and then going back to Brooklyn. Yeah. So you was the enforcer. Yeah, you know I mean, type yeah. shit, you know. Yeah. And before I moved to Atlanta. I was little than Fredro. Mm-hmm. He was my big cousin. Yeah. I, I got that country ear. Yeah. Came back. Now I was bigger than Fredro. Yeah. Now he's my big little cousin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, I had that, you know, that whole Brooklyn mentality and I wasn't having it. So you know what I mean? But overall, like I, I gotta keep and persisting, insisting, I'm still a nice guy, you right, know what I mean? And right. still have good morals instilled within me. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um so, I mean, so obviously y'all didn't start out as Onyx. How did Onyx come to No, form? they started out, well, well, we started out, that's my cousin. And right. Just, you know, when they f- first started rhyming, uh, I think him and Big DS yeah. started Onyx. Okay. And they were Onyx. They had a record deal that b- before I was even in the group. They mm-hmm. had a record deal on Profile Records. It was called I We Do It Like This. This mm-hmm. is uh, before Jam Master J days, you right. know what I mean? Right, right. Okay. And so, what? I mean, what made them include you? Jam Master J, because they were shopping the deal. And it was three members, Suave, mm-hmm. Big DS, and Fredro Starr. Mm-hmm. And two of the members, Suave and Big DS, got stranded, I, I forget what state, but out of state while they were shopping the deal to Jay. Mm-hmm. And their manager, Jeff Harris, he was like, yo, Jay is interested in this shit. He wants to hear more. We got to send some shit tonight. Suave and Big DS, I hear fucking Fredro and um, your cousin, Sticky. Y'all go to the studio, make something. Don't yeah. he rhyme? Yeah, boom. And we made Sticky move. Mm-hmm. So when they were shopping their demos, Stick and Move was in there. He was like, whoa, 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 what's this? Mm-hmm. Rewind that. He's like, yo, give me 10 of these, 10 songs like this. Mm-hmm. And who's the nigga with the deep voice? Oh, that's my cousin Stick, but he ain't in the group. He is now. Yeah. And that's how I was abducted into Onyx. Wow. Yeah, because, I mean, you do have a unique voice. You always, you know, I mean, you when you hear a sticky record, a sticky verse, you, it's only one you. Yeah, with the voice. I was in the grocery store. Yeah. A little kid, he had to be, I don't know. 
12, 13, mm -hmm. something like that. He's like, wait a minute, aren't you the guy from the Def Jam Vendetta game? <laughs> he ain't know nothing about Onyx. Mm -hmm. He ain't know nothing about movies, next yeah. Fridays, none of that. I was like, oh shit, word. He's like, I recognize you from your voice. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That mean I can't do no robberies. Nothing. Put Imagine, a face mask. Yeah. Yo, give me your money. Sticky. <laughs> That's you. Hey, like homeboy from uh, Damn, uh ma? White boy, white man can't jump. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. He, got, he, <laughs> <laughs> he said, you don't put that goddamn gun down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's dope. That's dope. So, so what was Jam Master J like? Like that whole thing. I mean, cause you hooking up with an iconic figure like him. Like, you know, what was he like? Hmm. And what was that moment like? Cause you had to know that okay, this we probably got something with this. Cause this is, this is a legend right here who's who's co-signing us and really trying to fuck with us. Well, what Jam Master J was like? He was fucking everything you heard and more. You know, mm -hmm. um, it was like the big brother I never had. You know what I mean? A mentor, um, and Jay was gangster. We went to his crib in uh, Lower Manhattan. This nigga showed me more automatic weapons than I ever seen in my fucking life. He just kept pulling, cause you know he knew I was a gunhead. Mm -hmm. He just kept pulling them out. I'm like, oh shit, then another one. Oh shit, another one. Another oh. crazy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And as far as you know, working with him, um, yeah, I kind of knew that we was gonna fuck everybody up, cause that's all I wanted to do anyway. I ain't care about fame yeah. or fortune. I was uh, content with just, just cutting hair, cutting school to cut hair, and making like 1500 a week mm -hmm. at like 16, 17 years old mm -hmm. in the barbershop, you know? So, I mean, she, and I 16, just want, that ain't bad. That's not bad at all, yeah. you know what I mean? And, yeah. it's, and it's legal, right? you know? I just wanted to just be the illest MC ever, mm -hmm. and I think I did that. And then you got to keep doing it, though. And, you know, and, you know, we were, we were groomed by the best, by Run DMC, right. you know, how to... Excuse me, control a crowd and do a show, pardon me, and you know, so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. So, being an East Coast dude, I mean, did you ever listen to any other music outside the East Coast? Did you, what were your other influences? I never music? looked at it like East Coast or any other coast, just good music, yeah, right, right, bad music. What was some of the other stuff you listened to, you know, uh, other rappers from other places? Everybody, I listened to everybody, whether I like them or not, doesn't know what they but I listen to everybody, you know, the NWAs, the you know, Ice T at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 it, it list goes on, you know. Right, right. So yeah. you you hook up with with Jam Master J, and y'all do y'all first deal. No, you that was the second deal because you said the first. My one. first, their yeah. second. And Def Jam. Def Jam. I right. signed my contract illegally because I was seventeen. I was a minor. Wow. So you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn. Okay. But I ain't snitching. <laughs> But the thing is, is so I read somewhere that basically they said that y'all saved Def Jam. Absolutely, but you know what? Uh, I think probably a few artists probably did that. Yeah, you know, I know DMX did it later. I, yeah, I just heard about the DMX shit. Yeah. They, 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 so you know, they they making money, they spending all their money. Now you're in the deficit, and they need a new artist to come through and save the day. You yeah. know. So what was that like? I mean, you coming from cutting hair, making fifteen hundred dollars a week, right? And now all of a sudden you with one of the most iconic rap labels, you know what I mean? And you working with with Jam Master J. I mean, Incredible. What was that especially um, you, obviously active in the street too. So you know, having to make that transition from you know what I mean, being in the streets, doing what you're doing, and then now you're in this industry. You make no transition. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, yo, know, it's an, it's incredible. It's like I call it the whirlwind. Yeah. You know, when that shit first started, it's a whirlwind. And then 10 years later, you come out the world and like, yo, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you jump in another world and do another album or you do a movie and yeah. you know, 10 years later, like, oh shit. You know? Um, it's incredible. Def Jam's the greatest hip hop label on the earth. Mm -hmm. Run DMC is the greatest group ever. Mm -hmm. You know, the first ones too. So, you know. Was, uh, Russell, was Russell still hands on? At that time? He was in Def Jam building. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the first time we went to Def Jam, mm -hmm. I'm asking Fredro, I'm like, yo, who that right there? He's like, nigga, you don't know who that is? I'm like, nah. Mm -hmm. He's like, nigga, that's Russell Simmons. I'm like, oh, all right, well, how the fuck I'm supposed to know? So, yeah. you know what I mean? So he's definitely here, you know? So who would be the most, You who who would you consider be the most hot-headed between you and Fredro? Definitely Fredro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm calm, cool, collective, you know. But listen, I'm gonna tell you something. Me and him, we good bounce partners, you know. Like, yeah. if if it's a hundred percent of the pie, uh -huh. right? Sometimes he's on sixty, I might be on forty. Right. Sometimes I might be on eighty, he might be on twenty. We both can't be on a hundred. Yeah. Because then yeah. it's 
shit's getting fucked up. Yeah. So we balance each other out good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like Charlemagne, for yeah. instance. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I seen your notes, so I think it's coming up. <laughs> oh, you over here like, spying on my shit. Come on, man. <laughs> I went to go get some water here and like, what this nigga gonna ask me, right? No, he, he wanna know. He wanna hey, know. Hey, Francis, when that shit uh, uh, went there, you know, he might have been turned up because, you know, yeah. dumbass questions and shit. Yeah. But I had to pull back. Yeah, I saw Otherwise, I we can't, you know, so I watched that. Yeah. It, we have a great relationship. You know, I'm a night person, he a day person, you know? You know, I like coffee, he like tea. Yeah. You know, he, I, he smoke, I used to drink. But I, I, I caught what you said, though, doing that. You what? know, I caught it slick because. I think Charlotte was trying to, um, afterwards, after it kind of uh, calmed down, he said it was sticky. And you was like, hey, I'm with whatever he with. I ain't said much, but if it go down, it is what it is. I'm going to be the one to do it. He he just mad, but I'm going to be the one to do it. I was like, wow. <laughs> wow, that's real shit right there. Right, so you better hope he cooled down. Let me see. <laughs> <clears throat> nah, but look, like, you know, like Frederick said a million times, you know, Mm-hmm. After that, you know, niggas took pictures, mm-hmm. and shook hands, and so yeah, yeah, love. yeah, yeah, yeah. No big deal. I saw that part too. Who gives a yeah. fuck? You know what I mean? Yeah, it was a Ain't moment nobody, in time. Yeah. No, no harm, no foul. Yeah, it was a yeah. moment in time. So y'all first hit record was what? What was that? Um, da, 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 let the boy. Well, go. technically, yeah, well, Slam was probably our biggest record, but the first hit record was Throw Your Guns. Right. And even before you put out Throw Your Guns, we put out the, the snippet of Back the Fuck Up. Move back, right. Back the Fuck Up. That was it, too. So. That's the Source Award yeah. one, right? Yeah. You know what, I mean? what year was that? Because I think I was on House Arrest when that shit Well, the came single out. came out in 1992. Yes. The album came right. out in 1993. Right. I was, on, I was on House Arrest. Oh, yeah? They had y'all shit on rotation. I ain't even going to lie to you, bro. I didn't know that I was going to meet you 20, 30 years later. Uh, they played the shit so much, I fucked Was you that diesel back then? Nah, I wasn't. What was you, I, I was <laughs> you look like back then? I, I, I was a skinny nigga with long hair, oh, right? Shit. I was on house arrest. I, I couldn't leave that shit. bitch. And they played the fuck out of back the fuck nigga, up. Yo, oh we changed God. fucking hip hop, my nigga. I, I was so tired of y'all fucking song. Because all I had to watch was right. MTV. Y'all, y'all, you, the box! You and CZ Penniston, that fucking keep oh. on walking uh, shit. Keep on. Yeah, keep on. Yeah, right. Moving. <laughs> no, not that oh, one. Oh, CZ Penniston. No, no. How see, the keep on walking. Keep on walking. I ain't talking to oh. you. Oh, yeah, that one. Okay. And I was like, shit, because that's all I could do all day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I was like, these niggas, these bald head niggas that they don't get off Man. the TV. I liked it at first, but after hearing it 200 times. Damn. But that was dope, though. I mean, y'all kind of was, I mean, would you consider that, I mean, it was hardcore hip-hop, but would you consider it like, I guess what they would call like mosh pit type shit? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we invented that in right. hip-hop. Right. You know what I mean, right. I'm, we the, I'm the first nigga to stage dive right. in hip-hop, to slam dance, and this is a fact, you know what yeah. I mean? You know, uh, uh, Rock was doing it. Yeah, but I know black street. That's what I was hip hop kids. Say. You Y'all I mean? kind of brought that hard, like a rock and roll. Even though it was hardcore hip hop. While we were making the album, right? We was watching the same shit. The box, MTV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We watching Nirvana, right? And we pulling pieces from mm. from everything. You right. know, everything that's going on at that time. The Dodge mm. Facts, the yeah, the, the Naughty by Nature's, the Cypress Hills, right? The Nirvana, right? We sitting there and we taking all that shit. That's input. Yeah, and and when we writing, that's output. So we putting it out. You know, think about it. Nirvana's logo is a happy face. Mm-hmm. Onyx logo is a mad face. Right. By the way, this this is all Onyx, nigga. I'm, 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 <laughs> we like Master P. <laughs> you got you know, product we, out there. I own pro- <laughs> everything I got on <laughs> down to the pants is Onyx. You know what I mean? Yeah. What about the Ewings? You ain't got on the Ewings. I ain't got them on today. You ain't got on the Ewings. <laughs> but we got those two. Yeah. They beat up. You know what I mean? I had to come just see Courtney <laughs> nice and crispy and fresh. They ain't sent my new package yet. <laughs> yeah, they got the Onyx Ewings and the bitches on point. They on point. Um, okay, so then, so the back the fuck up comes out. It goes what? Gold? Platinum? Hell, that shit went double platinum. Double platinum. Hell yeah. Shit. Oh. And when they gave it to plat, you know, it was a platinum plat, but then it was still selling. So yeah. then it went double. It's probably, probably triple or quadruple right now. Who knows? So, so Slam and Back the Fuck Up and Throw Your Guns in the Air are all on the same album. Correct. Damn, so I know for a fact them three hit singles and, right and, there. And sucker the next nigga dig Brett Ratner shot that video. It's Brett Ratner's first video ever. Yeah, damn. He's fucking directing X Men now and shit. Right, you know what I right, mean? Right. Steve Carr was on there, fucking, you know, it's a lot of joints from off that album, you know what I mm-hmm. mean? And so that's the album that y'all got it's nominated. Y'all got nominated for a Source Award. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that. But so they give us one. Yeah, yeah. So so you go to the Source Awards, you and your boys, mm-hmm. right? And so the single that you're pushing is Throw Your Guns in the Air, right? Mm-hmm. Your ass come out. What was that? What was that you was busting? A four, five, and nine. You come out. 
you sh- you actually put your gun in the air and shot the motherfucking place up. Well, look, tell what what was you was you in New York when you doing that? It was in New York. That's I, I had a he gun caught case. a case in New I York. I caught a case. Oh yeah, in New York. yeah. <laughs> now, New York, you don't play. That's why I was asking him when I seen the video. I said, oh, gee, you can't, can't be such a good catcher. Yeah, I got you <laughs> so I mean, walk us through that stick, because I mean, I know you're the only one in history ever did that. You know what I mean? Mm. What what was in your mind to say, you know what, I'm well, gonna go out here and bust my shit? Well, look, it's I'm, I'm a responsible person, okay? Mm-hmm. It was part of the show. Mm-hmm. We had just got off tour mm-hmm. with Dr. Dre, and I was on the Chronic 2000 tour, Chronic mm-hmm. 2000, not the 2001, whatever. Boom, the Chronic tour, I think, which is yeah. just Chronic, the Chronic tour. And my thing, when I was but I was, was supposed to bust the Desert Eagle mm-hmm. on stage. But I never got a chance to do it for two reasons. First, the first time I was going to do it, but the, the ego had the mic and the shit. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't conquer it. It's so damn big. Yeah, yeah. I got so I was like, ah, fuck yeah. it. So I put it away. I didn't do it. Yeah. Then the tour I canceled. Yeah. Because somebody in, 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 in the chronic entourage did some shit. Kidnapped the driver or whatever. Yeah. Next, uh, next morning, we come downstairs, and it's a precinct in front of the hotel. Yeah. Niggas doing lineups by the tour bus, the whole shit. You know what I mean? So that was a wrap. So when we got to do the Source Awards, I said, I'm busting my gun on this shit. Throw your gun. Fuck that. And, you know, I did it safely, but I can't front. The security did try to rush me out. Like, you went the gun. Where's the gun? I'm like, <laughs> they never found Nigga, that Are you serious? <laughs> what, what gun? It was a hologram, like Tupac. And you, and we had holograms way back then. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. That shit, you you went down in history for that. that I remember seeing As long that. as I went down in history, and that's it. <laughs> right, right. <I laughs> went rem- down in the tombs. <laughs> yeah, you was going viral, you know what I mean? Even back then with that. Before viral. Before viral. Because mm-hmm. I remember it being all in the magazines, and I was like, nah, I remember being... And you know what? That was the same awards when the East Coast, West Coast beef started. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If you don't want your executive producer dance yeah. video shit, right? So, so it's like when I shot the gun, yeah. it's like a starter pistol for the race. Uh-huh. The oh, hip hop race of the East Coast. Like, get in your mind, get yeah. set. Bow. East Coast, West Coast beef started. So what was that like? What was the what was the vibe like? Take us to that. What what was that like? That whole thing. Cause that's when the shit kind of really I mean, off. You know what? I didn't even know that that happened that night until later. Uh-huh. Cause after we did our, you know, performance or uh, didn't get an award. We probably backstage, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm not in the crowd. Yeah. So I didn't see that happen. Okay. I didn't see that till later. So, so I, mean, I didn't know what was going on. So it wasn't whispers, you know. It wasn't already shit going. Man, the on. way we move, the niggas ain't whispering nothing over there. Yeah. Them, leave them niggas alone. Yeah. You know what I mean, so mm-hmm. I ain't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. So and we was all, we were always to ourselves, especially yeah. back in those days. We ain't want to do no features. Okay. We ain't want to make no okay. friends. Okay. What up? What up? All right, all right, keep it moving. Well, and, and I got a hundred niggas behind me, and, and only half of the niggas really listen. Right. My bad. Right. It's all, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I mean the other half, I, I, I can't be held accountable. Yeah, yeah. So let's just, you know, you want me to get you a drink? Just, I'm trying to save your life here. Yeah. You know, type shit. So Onyx was just kind of their own entity, so y'all wasn't clicky like that. It wasn't at like all, we alliances. Ain't nobody was us, like and that. that's it. Oh, okay. You okay. know. At that point in time, it wasn't so, until later years where we started mingling with people and doing features and hanging out with other niggas and whatever, you know what I mean? So once the East Coast, West Coast shit kicked off, what was y'all's position in it? I mean, even though y'all wasn't tied to the... the, the Our position the was positions. we moved to L.A. We we was in L.A., living in L.A. with New York license plate because we shipped the cars out, yeah. right? And we had mad things inside the trunk when we shipped them too, yeah. right? Uh, when all that shit was going on. Mm-hmm. And we good, nigga. Yeah. And then, matter of fact, we performed at the House of Blues, mm-hmm. and Tupac came too. Mm-hmm. Red Man was there, Keith Berry, and the whole talk, JMF was there, he had the ill niggas holding us down. The whole talk was, yo, is Onyx gonna perform Walk in New York? Mm-hmm. Of course we is. We performed that shit, Tupac came there in front of the stage, like, yeah, my niggas. Of course, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, it's all love, nigga. Like, listen, red and blue, you mix that shit together with a little bit of yellow, that makes brown. I'm with the nigga, the nigga army, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, sure. you know, but I understand, just, just like I was saying on some decep shit, Bloods and Crips, it's a, some family shit, you yeah, know? Yeah. But everybody's still human, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, Cause you know been they, in the hoods out here yeah. and everything. You know what I mean? I got, you know. Because the thing about it is the reason I asked. So y'all basically were able to elude the whole East Coast, West Coast. You didn't get mixed up in that, basically. I mean, look. I'm I'm a, um 
I will cut off my nose to spite my face. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, let leave them niggas alone. Because mm-hmm. it, it, it could happen. Right. And I don't want it to happen. You don't want it to happen. Nobody wants it to happen. Right. So it's certain niggas you just don't fuck with, you know? Right. Certain right. niggas, is, they good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, so yeah, we ain't gonna mix up in that shit, you know? Yeah. Now, I never heard nothing. I never, you know what I'm saying? I never heard nothing about y'all or nobody coming at y'all uh, with that. And, we, and, and you know what? We show respect. So we get respect, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Okay. So, I mean, so you said Tupac was there. Did you have a relationship with Tupac? No, not really. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I met him a few times. Matter of fact, after that, years later, at, at Rodney Dangerfield's club in New York, mm-hmm. Pac was there. We just had chilling. He ran up on me. Yo, what up? Oh, shit, what up? Yo, man, what about you a drink? Word? Just go. What you got? Hennessy. We just had a drink. And that was it, you know. I only the only thing we exchanged numbers and numbers. It was just a real cool. Whoop, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. So after y'all released that first record with the three hit singles, what was the what was the second record? All we got is us. Mm-hmm. These evil streets is rough. Right, right. I remember that. I remember that. Did that do as that went as well as the first one? Um, to me it did. Mm-hmm. Uh, the record sales might not have um. Uh, did as much, right? But um, it was a gap in between the albums. We were on tour for a long time, and it was a really darker album. You know, even though the success we had, we were still going through uh, dark things. Yeah. And our personal lives, right, right. These things happening with our family members and such. You know, and we wanted to take control of our own production to make our own beats. You know, mm-hmm. we bought fucking SB twelve hundred, the beat machine. Mm-hmm. A Kai 950 start making our own shit. Mm-hmm. That's what Fredro made last days. Well, I helped, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Look, like they say, the sophomore jinx, but was think, it a sophomore jinx? I think or it, was, I think it, it did the opposite. Jam. Yeah. I think it might have been both. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and at that time, I wasn't uh, crossing the T's and dotting the I's. I was just being a young artist. You yeah. know what I mean? I wasn't doing the business side of the shit, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, but, um, I think it was the opposite, because they say the sophomore jinx, and, but when we came out with that dark album, I think it just, just solidified us even more that we could still travel across the fucking globe, sell out concerts, but and, and people was like 16 years old, they not even born when our album was made type yeah, shit yeah. to this day. Right, right. So I think when you stick to your guns, it lasts longer. You know, they say if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. I think we went together. You know? Yeah. And you guys didn't, y'all didn't succumb to trends either. I mean, you stayed consistent with who right. y'all were. You Absolutely. Know, you, can't, you can't follow after nobody because mm-hmm. that's when you get lost. That's mm-hmm. when it'd be like, oh, this nigga's just doing any old thing. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like that's, like for instance, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now I'm a vegan. I don't even eat chicken. I'm just using this as an example. But Kentucky Fried Chicken, if they start trying to taste like Popeyes, mm-hmm. then, you know, yeah. if McDonald's start trying to taste like Burger King, right, right. you know, you got to stick to your guns. You got to make your French fries what they are, you know? Right, right. right. So how many albums did y'all do on Def Jam? I believe we did three albums on Def Jam. Mm-hmm. When you split from Def Jam, was it amicable or y'all was like, we want to get the fuck away from y'all? Um, what happened was, see what happened was, um, I wanted to do a solo deal mm-hmm. and I was going to go to Dr. Dre. He said, yo, I'm going to sign you for a million dollars. And I was going to Dre and Def Jam was like, yo, I'm not in the business of taking overrides. So he tried to uh, keep me there. So I had to do some legal shit to get out of the contract. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody left a bad taste in, their, in everybody's mouth, whatever. Mm-hmm. So... You know, it is what it is. Like you know, but I'm gonna tell you this though: the de- the, de- the 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 game, Jeff Jam Vendetta, and Jeff Jam Fight for New York, mm-hmm. they made me like one of the lead characters. Yeah, there's a lot of rappers. The last person we had to fight was me. Well, really, it was Snoop mm-hmm. with me, and then Snoop, mm-hmm. and I wasn't even signed to Def Jam at that time. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was real honorable with, um, to come get the yeah. God of the uh, Underground, right. even though he's not signed to us no more, mm-hmm. and put on that game. Because that's, that's history. You know what I mean? Yeah, real talk. Real talk. And this game is done very well, too. Absolutely. Still, yeah. still to this day. To this yeah. day. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, that's dope. That's dope. So once you, okay, you part ways with Def Jam, 
So was your first album, your first solo album, the Kirk Jones album? Yes. Yeah. What Kirk year Jones, was that? I remember that. Fear Black of yeah. Black Trash, All the Fear of Kirk Jones. You know, I don't know what fucking year it was. Mm-hmm. 99, maybe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you did that on what label? On Universal. Universal. Okay. It should have been on Aftermath, though. Mm-hmm. So what happened with that? Uh, I went to Universal to shop my brother X1's deal. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, yo, what up, Dino Devali? Yeah, I'm here to shop X1. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He said, yeah, yeah, we, X, we want to hear your shit. I said, don't even worry about my shit. I'm signing with Dre. The, uh, Dre said he would give me a million bucks. Mm-hmm. But when Jimmy Iovine got in the picture, he's like, wait a minute, his last album only went gold. So we will give him 500000 And I was cool with it, mm-hmm. you know? And then I went to Universal to shop X1. And he's like, uh, but let me hear your stuff anyway, Sticky. I was like, fuck that. So I played him some stuff. Mm-hmm. He said, yo, Sticky. I don't want to be in the bidding war with Jimmy Iovine, but I want to sign you. And then they put eight hundred thousand on the table. Yeah. So the extra three hundred thousand mm-hmm. was the money I used to buy my mother her first house ah, ever. Dope. So it's it's like a what if comic book. Yeah. What if I did this? What if I did right. that? Would have been right. better. Would have been worse. Who knows? At that time, Dre had a lot of beef, a lot of yeah. problems with. Yeah. You know who. Yeah. And I'm a no nonsense type of nigga. Yeah. So if I would have signed, I'd probably be dead right now mm-hmm. or in jail for killing somebody. Yeah. You're you know? Out, so maybe it's a good thing I didn't sign. Mm-hmm. You know? But Dre always held me down too. Because even though I went with Universal, he still showed me love. He still uh, did things. Yeah. He made songs yeah. and da 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 da. You know? He put me on the Eminem album. Mm-hmm. Which sold 16 million copies. Yeah, yeah. So I got like a million dollars. Yeah. For like a 24 bar verse. Yeah. You know what I mean? That. Put me on Snoop Dogg project. You know, Dre's my nigga. I love Dre. What know? was that like uh, being a part of? Because you were on the Marshall Mathers, uh, right? Uh, and that went what 11 million, diamond or some shit. 16. Oh, 16 excuse million. me. I got the plaque in the crib. Oh, 16. 16. So what was that? Were you in the studio? Did y'all do that in the studio together or? Well, here's the thing. The RBX, the one, the one we're talking yeah. about on the album, we did not do that in the studio together. It was me, RBX, and Dr. Dre. And the name of the and song actually, was Actually, that, that song... What was it? Remember Me. Remember Me. But yeah. that song wasn't even for Eminem's album. Really? It was for Dr. Dre's album. Uh, but Eminem liked the song so much, he kept it for his own album, which I'm right. glad. That's just right. so 16 million, you know? Yeah. And, mm-hmm. um, but me and Eminem were in the studio where he did a chorus for me. Uh, for the song I had called What If I Was White. What If I Was yeah, White. I mean, right, so, right, yeah. right. Yeah, I remember And big that. up to M. You know, he said he owed me one. Mm-hmm. He said, yo, man, you know, you body my shit, but I only did a chorus for you. And so I, I, I still feel like I owe you, Sticky. I'm coming to collect Mr. Slim Shady. Yeah. Holla. <laughs> so I know that y'all have a big following overseas. You know, Onyx still goes strong, you know, in Europe and shit like that. What, what what's the craziest thing? Cause I mean, y'all y'all shows carry so much energy. You know what I mean? It's it's all that wild shit. What's what's some of the craziest shit you've seen on the road that that put, sticks out? Cause I mean, you know, you're a wild boy, so I know you. You know what I mean? What's the, what's the craziest thing you can remember? I don't know. Whether it's a fight, a skirmish, you know, we ain't gonna, you know, you ain't gotta indict yourself, but something that's, <laughs> you know, what I mean? that's that's crazy. Man. um... I don't know, man. Shit. One time we was performing, and um, the crowd ain't. We this is early, early. Mm-hmm. We had, had a fight with the whole entire crowd. Mm-hmm. Niggas start throwing bottles at us. We picked up bottles, throwing it back at them. Yeah. It was like two hundred of them yeah. and like thirty of us. Yeah. That shit was crazy. I mean, you know, that didn't happen too often, but you know, I said a lot of things. There was a fight in the club. Motherfuckers got hit with cheers. Uh, then uh, uh, this girl tried to sue me. It's like, yeah, it was sticky, so they made me do a lineup and the whole shit, right? Mm-hmm. And I had Fredro on a lineup with me, and I'm a homeboy Keto, because we all looked alike a little bit. Mm-hmm. So she picked some, she picked Keto or Fredro, but she didn't pick me, mm-hmm. so the case went away. Turns out, she was a friend of one of my cousins. Wow. I was like, he did some shit. <laughs> yeah. I know, a lot of stuff, you know? <laughs> but I, it, mostly I got good stories, though, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Because... Everywhere we go, we get love. Yeah. Yeah. Niggas be telling me, yo, oh, t- today, like, you know, like, your music and everything saved my life, changed my life. I was going through this and going through that, mm-hmm. and, and it, it helped me, and da 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 mm-hmm. And when niggas be telling me that, it be, it be so ill, like, you know what I mean? And you can look in their eyes and see yeah. that, that they, it's just some ill shit. Yeah. I'm talking about, like, I, then we'll go to, like, the hood and be like, 
I'm talking about body catchers. Nigga, I just caught a body five minutes ago. Shit, what up, Sticky Yo? Can I get a picture? Get an autograph? I'm talking about psycho, wild out killer niggas. Yeah. So when the love is coming from that level, from these type of people, yeah. it's different. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. different. All your gratifying. niggas turn to security guards and yeah. shit. You know yeah. what I mean? It's gratifying when you got the approval of your peers and the streets. You know? you know what I mean? Especially at that level. It's like, you know, yeah. it's not the old fanboy shit, some mm -hmm. street nigga shit. You know? Mm -hmm. So so after you do the, the Kirk Jones album, and then you, you when when did you decide to start taking the transition into acting? Like, yeah. was that something that. What you gotta understand is this acting and rapping was almost. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, right? Mm -hmm. The first year our first album came out, mm -hmm. the first year, me and Fredro, it was really Fredro's movie, I only did a cameo in it, mm -hmm. did our first movie, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Strapped. Yeah, Strapped was dope. Right? Yeah. That, it, yeah. You know, the, the album wasn't even out yet when mm -hmm. Fredro was filming that movie. Played like Scientific. Well, that was, that was Clockers. Clockers. And that yeah, came yeah, out, yeah. that was the next yeah, yeah. one. Right, right. That was my real first movie. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But more, just, you know, what I'm leading up to is that it was simultaneously. It's not like we was rapping and we was platinum, uh -huh. and then when we started doing movies, we started auditioning before the album came out. Oh, so they, the, the the careers were going yeah. neck and so neck. So I'm saying, but what what you know, because usually niggas don't think like that, especially coming from you know our environment. Like, what made you say? Or Fredro say, you know what? We doing this music thing, man. Let's go try this acting thing. Russell Simmons. He said, yo, okay. uh, I got this audition I want you guys to go to. Mm -hmm. And he sent us on an audition for for for, for uh, Strapped. Mm -hmm. And then after that, another audition came up with the clockers. It was yeah. an open call audition. Line was around the block. Yeah. Everybody in New York was trying out for the part. We, now, now, we was Onyx at that time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we, mm -hmm. we might have been platinum or not platinum, whatever. I was on some bullshit. I skipped the whole line. Mm -hmm. Went up in there with that energy and got the part. Mm -hmm. And it just kept going from there. Fredro got Moesha, moved to LA. I was like, nigga, you ain't leaving me. Mm -hmm. I jumped on the plane, met him out there. He already had the apartment, two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. So he knew I was coming. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And we it just kept going. Got a manager, got an agent. Uh took it seriously. Yeah. Wasn't like a rapper, actor, me right. meaning I showed up on time. Yeah. Professional. I can say that about you personally. Yeah. You you you, you called me today. Yeah. At, you called me, I'm going to tell you, uh, <laughs> you called me at 629. Yeah. yeah. What I was going to say, nigga, it's not 630 yet. <laughs> but then I remember the size of your arms. No. But said, yeah, I'm right there. <laughs> <laughs> but see, what it is, though, is every I know you to be super punctual. Um, Usually no. you're early. Professional. Usually you're early. Either I'm early or exactly on time <laughs> or, you know, or I'm really late. Yeah, yeah. Cause when <laughs> but we, for good reason. When we was wrapping up, I said, nah, I know this nigga Sticky. He probably out here waiting. You know what I mean? Because I know you you would be very punctual yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, and when and my, my dude, my driver was driving, I'm like, you hurry the fuck up. You going to fuck up my representative? <laughs> I can't be late. You know what I mean? Hey, so LA so, fame. So you took on acting like really, really. Uh, well, yeah, I was I was a good liar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, look. Did like, you take acting classes? No, I never took acting class. Really? No. Wow. I'm actually giving acting classes now. Really? Yeah, you go to Sticky Fingers Dot Bids. I'm giving Sticky Fingers acting master classes. You know what I mean? And but we're gonna broaden it because. It's, it's so much more that I could download and teach people. Yeah. You know, that they don't got to take 10 years to learn. They can learn in 10 minutes. So what you teaching, like the Meisner technique or the sticky finger technique? Um, well, I can only teach mine because yeah. I don't know everybody else's. Yeah. Um, and just teaching them uh, about themselves, too. Because mm -hmm. I know myself so well that I know everybody else. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a given, you know? Right. The more you know yourself, the more you're going to know everything else because everything ain't nothing but you. Right, right. Yeah, one thing I learned about uh, acting, and especially because you and I are working on a new project, which I'll get to, mm. is, you know, I'll be honest with you, it was, you know, Blade made me really respect you as an actor because, I mean, you you know, I had in my mind, yeah. you a hip-hop nigga, you right. hardcore, you know, you the robber nigga, you the nigga you're supposed to watch if you see him somewhere, <laughs> you know what I mean, in the dark I'm alley. I'm a superhero. I'm, yeah. I'm, you watch but, me, but I'm here to save the day. But when you did Blade, I mean, like, I didn't see that. I seen Blade, and even after coming after Wesley, you know what I'm saying? You Man, big up to Wesley. Job. Yeah. I yeah. seen him at Judge Mathis' party. Yeah. He said, yo, what's up, Blade? I said, Wesley, you better stop playing. 
I ain't leaving in the car. <laughs> I'm not fucking with you, nigga. Wesley, nice. Yeah. For real, for real. Yeah, for real. Love Wesley. That's just my yeah, nigga right well, there. Yeah, yeah Wesley got the, he got them uh, hands. Yeah. <laughs> nigga, touch you in the shoulder. Your body shit. You're like, oh, shit. You're like numb on this side. Yeah, yeah nah, you did it. So what was it like getting that? I mean, that, because that was big. And fucking credible, you know? That was one I had to manifest that one. Mm -hmm. Like, peep game, right? I was doing this TV show called Over There. Mm -hmm. It was a war show. I was playing a soldier. My name was a Smoke. I had the source, the sword, the 223. It was crazy, right? So uh, the Bosco, Steve Bosco and them, was shooting the show. You know, um, the show was over, right? And then we, we were trying to find out if we were going to get picked up for a second season. Mm -hmm. We found out that we're not getting picked up, but they want to send the whole cast on a five-star vacation to Chile. Mm -hmm. At this point, I had never been to Chile. It's like a two-week vacation, five-star to Chile. Simultaneously, the Blade audition comes up. Mm -hmm. So now I have an ultimatum. Go on this five-star vacation in Chile, which I've never been to at that point in time, or go to this audition for Blade. I used to be a comic book head when I was mm -hmm. growing up. Marvel, favorite character, Wolverine, X-Men, da 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 Go for Blade on an audition that I might not even get. I say, you know what? Fuck Chili. Don't fuck. I love Chili. Actually, the guy that's in Chili, Crack Brother, they produced a whole new Onyx album, Onyx for Life, right? So I was like, forget Chili. I'm going. Not only am I going on this edition. Really, my nigga? Yeah, yeah. Not only am I going on an edition, I'm taking this part. Mm -hmm. I manifested that shit. Manifested it. Uh, it was, uh, it was it put like this. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, not at 99.7 or 99.9. .9. As soon as it hits 100, instantaneously. Water freezes below zero. So when you have 100% unwavering of this is what's going to happen, there's nothing that can change that. You have to uh, think like it's impossible for you to fail. And that's the mind frame that I was in when I did that. It took days and months and weeks, and it was like 10 auditions, and I had to send these niggas, they had, uh, you know, Sticky, you could do this, you could do that, acting. They don't think you have a sensitive side. I had to send them edited footage of me crying in this episode or whatever, da 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 You know, I did the audition. My agent's like, yo, they don't think he's got a sensitive side. Go edit something together right now and have it to them tonight so when they wake up in the morning mm -hmm. it's there mm -hmm. shit like that that's just like and just the mental and i that's the first audition i ever went on where they told me that i had the audition in the room really and a good friend of both of ours michael ja white was there oh wow he ain't no audition in the room right yeah. and i was diesel i was way more diesel than i am right now yeah but I wasn't a Jesus with him. Yeah. He, this nigga, so gangster, so ghetto. He ain't no addition room. Shirt off. <laughs> Just chilly. I'm like, look at this nigga right here. <laughs> I'm like, yo. I'm all right. But he ill. But fuck that. I'm going to out act this nigga. You know, not, yo, he a good act, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But um, plus he was born. You know? Yeah. You yeah. nigga chance, nigga. Yeah. So I went there, I took that shit, my nigga. And it was incredible. Illest shit ever. It's probably like people say, hey, what's your favorite album or favorite movie or whatever? Or I have to go with Blade on that one. Wow. So what was the, I know you had to go through a lot of physicality for that. Like, did you have to train? like Sword, sword? training. Yeah. I was always doing fight training anyway. Yeah. But now, next level right. fight training, sword training. And I'm a hard-headed nigga. I'm a scorpion. So I'm like, yo, I'm doing all my own stunts. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I did like at least like 85% of my stunts. Mm -hmm. When they want you to dump, from a three-story window mm -hmm. onto cardboard boxes mm -hmm. that they got taped up. I was like, the stuntman could do that one. I'll be at Crafty. <laughs> but all the other shit, I was doing that shit. You yeah. know, I'm a physical person. I'm a, I'm a triathlon, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Where did they, where'd you film that at? In Vancouver. Okay, okay. How many seasons? One season, 13 episodes. Really? It was already supposed to only be one season. And the episodes I heard cost too much money to make mm -hmm. per episode. Mm -hmm. So they negated to go for a second season, which I think they fucking stupid for, but yeah. whatever. B but I think they're smart, too, because 
they did it in, in the first place. You know, big up to New Line, Cinema, Spike TV, all of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, now nah, that was dope, man. When you did that, I, I, that, that, I respect, salute, hats Thank off you, as an actor, because I was like, wow, he really pulled that Krista, off. Krista, <laughs> the whole blade voice and everything. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what, what discipline did you study in terms of martial arts for that thing? <clears throat> um, I was just telling my, um, my, my, my instructors, teach me the real shit. Mm -hmm. Don't teach me for TV. Like, yeah. te uh, show me how to break somebody's neck. Mm -hmm. Show me. When you teach me the real shit, and then we uh, um, choreograph it for television. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm really good at shit. You know what I mean? Okay. And I'm a, I'm a street fighter. Like I'm a actually I'm a horrible fighter. Okay. <laughs> a, a good fighter. Yeah. Will kick your ass and everybody get home safely. Me, something gonna get broke. I'm 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 snap snap break break. Yeah. Three seconds. That's it. You get three seconds in a fight. Snap snap break break. Uh, otherwise, let's not fight. Let's go get a drink. Well, I don't drink no more, but back then. Yeah. I mean, now, I mean, segue into that. Let's touch on that for a second. You said you don't drink anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm going to touch on that because I learned something about you. You know, you and I are working on, a, uh, on the project. You know, I had yeah. spent a lot of time with you, and I picked up on something that you said. What's that? You said when we was talking about the character, mm -hmm. how he struggled with alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And I, you was like, nigga, that's me. Right. But I didn't struggle with it. Yeah. I was enjoying the fuck out of myself. <laughs> <laughs> it was not wrong with it. It was a great time at the time of my life. But, you know, you got to know um, your human body. Mm -hmm. Things work. If you, take, if you have a headache and you take an aspirin, nine times out of ten, it works. Mm -hmm. So, if you're going to keep drinking cognac a fifth a day for over 20 years... Your liver got to be screaming, help me. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you got to you gotta know when to stop things. Mm -hmm. And I'm the type of person, I'll stop the, the day before it turns detrimental. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's what I did. I just, like, stopped. I said, you know what? I want to be sober for as long as I was fucked up. Yeah. If I was fucked up for the, for the past 20 years, I want to be sober for the next 20 years. That's, you know? Yeah. And here it is. It's, it's all willpower. Mm-hmm. You just push that button and it happens, mm -hmm. you know. So, I'm not to uh, not to belittle anybody that's going through yeah. uh, addiction, addiction yeah. non-stopping problems. Yeah, you know, for different people it's different. Yeah, but I got a whole different things on my mind. So, I just stopping was the easiest thing for me. Just like I'm vegan, and I stopped cold turkey. Mm -hmm. Get it? Stop cold turkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for real talk, you know. So, I mean, talking about addiction, so usually the, the, it's, deep, it's deeper than that when you pull the layers back, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So do you think that your addiction to alcohol, and usually with alcohol comes, and I ain't going to pry and get up, uh, all up in your shit, but usually comes other shit with that. You know what I mean? everything. Yeah. So do you think that it was deeper issues that you were self-medicating or you were just doing the shit because that's just what you You know like why I was doing it? Yeah. I figured it out because mm -hmm. I was fucking bored. I was bored. Really? Some people can't stand themselves. Mm -hmm. And you sit there, you're by yourself, and you're alone. Nothing to do, you know? So you try to find something to do. You watch TV, or you read a book, or you make a drink. You smoke some weed, or do whatever the fuck. You're bored, and you can't stand sitting with yourself. I've learned to accept myself and, and, and actually like myself now, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, I just, uh, now I have a new addiction. I like Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, you know, like all I, all, all I drink is water now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Actually, here's, here's the L shit, yo. They tried to tell me I had diabetes, and they said type one. Type one is a type that you're supposed to be born with. Right. You know, I don't know if something happened with all this COVID shit. Yeah. But I had gotten acquired diabetes. You know, yeah. type one. Wow. You know, they said my levels were like 700. Mm -hmm. You know, normal blood sugar level is allegedly from 70 to 120. Mm -hmm. I was at 700. They said, yo, you walking dead. You must be from Brooklyn because you're still alive. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they hooked me up to IV and all that shit. They said, yo, you're going to have to take insulin for the rest of your life, da 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 mm -hmm. I was like, fuck out of here. I'm not doing none of that shit. Mm -hmm. All right, look, I changed my whole diet. Changed my whole lifestyle, took a whole bunch of supplements, mm -hmm. and da da da. And that same water evaporates at 100 degrees, mm -hmm. that, that 100% thinking frame. I was like, it's, now it's reversed. Yeah. 
it's not a sign of it in me. Mm-hmm. I have one of those things you put on your arm. Yeah, yeah. You, you go to your phone. Yeah, yeah. You pull up the application. It tells mm-hmm. you your, your blood sugar levels. My shit is all normal, 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 normal. And you did so that. So I reversed diet. it. Just with diet. Diet, supplements, mm-hmm. proper thinking, mm-hmm. and you know, real talk. Yeah, yeah. Cut out all sugars, all, all, all white foods, starches. You know. But now I'm okay. Mm-hmm. I have some M and M's the only way here. Like yeah. I'm good, good, good now. But. Some things still stay with me. Like, I don't drink soda no more. Yeah. I just drink water, mm-hmm. maybe a coffee every now and then, you know, no liquor, you know. And I'm just focused and I'm clear now. Yeah. And so from here to whatever, it's just a whole different kind of ball game now, you know? So why do you think that, I mean, it's interesting that you say that you felt like you couldn't sit with yourself, like you didn't like yourself. Like what, 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 why, you know, what, what spawned that? You know what I'm saying? Why do you think that was? Mm, uh, I don't know, man. I was just bored, man. Mm-hmm. Bored and existing, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was just bored, man. You know? Even with all the accolades, the touring, the money, all of that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because, you know, put like this, man, once you had it once, like you had it twice and three times, like, okay, mm-hmm. like, you know, not to mm-hmm. belittle the, the greatness of the success and everything, right, right, right. but that shit, you know, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But what I do know is sometimes you got to put your foot down mm-hmm. and stop shit. Yeah. And that's what I did. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so. Hey, you kudos know. to you for doing that. I was doing drugs all my fucking life since I was like 14. Wow. Fred Joe gave me my first uh my first hardcore drug, LSD. We was like fifteen doing LSD, the little paper tabs you put on your mm-hmm. tongue like Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. That's you know some hallucinogenics so, type shit. Type yeah. shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, wow. you know, I, and I'm blessed to have been through everything and and, and focus like a fucking a pen right now, you yeah. know. But you know, that's your testimony. I mean, you know, you went through that to be able But to I've never been now. known yeah. for for anything like that. Nah. Cause nah. it wasn't like that. I never heard no shit. Yeah, it wasn't like that, like that. You know what I mean? You wasn't you wasn't Rick James. You yeah, wasn't it wasn't Rick like James, that. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. So let's talk about, I mean, like when you did working with Tiny Lister. And uh, you know, rest Man. in peace. That was my big brother. That's right my there. big brother for real. Yeah, yeah. Next was, Friday. Yeah, that was my brother. What was it like doing the next Friday with with Tiny? Man, it was crazy, you know. He's a big giant. Mm-hmm. But all he used to talk about is God, God this yep. and God that yep. and God this. Yep. He nigga wouldn't hurt a fly. Right. Actually, I wish he would hurt the damn fly to land on my cup. So I want some water and I can't drink it now. Man, this fly been fucking with us all day, bro. <laughs> yeah, he come back here, it's going to be war. <laughs> but, um, man, we're going to miss him. I miss him, you know. Mm-hmm. What you was know? it like on the set of Friday working with him? It was cool. It was mm-hmm. cool. You know, uh, here's the thing. I got really cool. See, I'm, I'm a nigga, nigga, you know? Yeah, for sure. Like, Kill, you know, he's busy, he's working, he's doing this, he's, he's mad cool. Yeah. But all of his, like, hoodlum niggas, his yeah. top niggas, yeah. we we vibe crazy. Right. You know, matter of fact, we went to the um, uh, the next Friday's rap party. I had to beat somebody's ass on the rap party. Damn. And it was two of them. Yeah. So, Q's homeboy, he could have had to, I forget his name. Damn, it's my nigga, too. Nigga had to fuck the fuck up like me. His might have been a little bit worse. He had the other nigga. But he he had mad niggas with him. So and the other nigga I had, like, you know, it was love on that shit. It was dope. You know what I mean? For me to go to the, the rap party, I had to smash the nigga out, and them niggas had my back. It was all love. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was it? What was that over the what was it over the party? I walked to the party, my wife at the time, uh, God bless her soul, she's good on now. Um, I'm talking to Lady of Rage. And she's over there talking to some dudes. I'm like, she can handle herself, whatever. Right? So I'm finished talking to Lady Rage. Um, I goes, all right. So I grab her hand, time to go. The nigga punched me in the face. So I'm like, maybe, you know, you know, you think a million thoughts in one split second. Mm-hmm. So maybe the nigga think I'm taking this bitch or whatever. Who gives a fuck? Oh, I had a drink in my hand. Because remember, but I used to always drink. Mm-hmm. Crack! Right upside his head. Lick everywhere. Glass everywhere. Blood everywhere. Mm-hmm. Had the nigga upside down, head locked. Just bow, bow, pound in the mouth. Back myself into a corner, still pounding him out. His homeboy is getting worked over by by by, by Cuban and his yeah. boys, not Cuban, but his boys. Yeah. Right. And finally, I let the nigga go. The nigga stumble away. I'm like, fuck, man. Now we gotta go. So he left, whatever, whatever. It was crazy. But you, you know what's crazy? A nigga was gangster too because years later I went back to that same exact club. Mm-hmm. As I'm walking in the club, I'm like, you know what? 
That's crazy. This is, this is the club I had that fight in. Why nigga walk over me? He said, yo, shit, stick your fingers up, my nigga. He said, yo, I'm on the phone my homeboy. Well, not, it, it, it was on the phone my homeboy. He said, yo, you beat his ass in this club. <laughs> he said, yo, yo, tell Sticky, give him props. He beat my ass, fan square like a G. And da 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 da. I was like, well, that's ill, man. He walked away. And I, the nigga I was with, my nigga, I ain't even gonna say his name. Yeah. He like cornball nigga. And I ain't had no ham on me or nothing, right? I'm like, where? I said, yo, order one more drink. And then we get getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> we need to change their mind. Yeah, right. Real talk. Ass. <laughs> if you need your kids, everybody will kill you. <laughs> that shit was That's crazy. That's a real Good hood times, shit right nigga. there. That's a real hood shit right there. <laughs> See how we we ain't going to leave right ass. now. Yeah. Have one drink. And then we out of here. <laughs> with your pussy ass. I'm going to get killed out here. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, nah, that's that's dope, man. I mean, you had an illustrious career, bro. It sounded like the journey been fun, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, how can I be bored, right? The yeah, fuck? yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, what what was your fate? Well, you said Blade was do your favorite movie that you done. Well, that was a TV show. TV show. My movie. favorite movie I yeah. did, because you had done some big movies. You I did ninety seven big... movies in my career. Wow. Well, I, that, that's what IMDb says. Wow. When I looked that up, I was like, 97? But you what played but you played opposite of some mainstream Hollywood Real shit. motherfuckers. Right. My favorite movie I ever did is this movie called A Day in the Life. Mm -hmm. I wrote the movie. I produced the movie. I starred in the movie. Uh, I directed the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and I got every black actor in Hollywood, including Michael Rappaport, in the movie. Yeah. Uh, but here's the ill thing about the movie. All the dialogue is in rap. Mm. Everybody's rapping their dialogue. There's no regular parts whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Beats and rhymes, but it's a movie. I'm talking- It's on Netflix. Actually, it's on this site called TubiTV.com. Oh yeah, I watch Tubi all the time. T-U-B-I-TV.com. Yeah. Yeah. You go watch it on there for free or whatever the yeah. fuck. And I did a second one too, called Caught on Tape. Mm -hmm. First one, I'm, I'm talking about Kai Fight for Omar Epps, mm -hmm. Clarence Williams III, Ray J, uh, 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 Corrupt, Trash, the list goes on, Fred Joe Bokeem, Mm -hmm. The second one, I got Vivica Fox, Cedric the Entertainer, Malik Yoba, it's like mm -hmm. Keith Robinson, like you financed, them, you financed them yourself, or you got the first one of Dana Life since my directorial debut. Uh -huh. Um, I financed myself. I started yeah. financing myself because mm -hmm. who's gonna believe? Oh, Tiki could direct and this right, and right, right, right. But Lionsgate uh, saw the f first couple of scenes we shot and edited. And they came aboard and, and gave us acquisition mm -hmm. and gave us finishing funds and Dope. put the movie through Lionsgate. Dope. And the second one came through Lionsgate as well, even right. though it was private funding. You know right, what I mean? Right. Now, I'm about to start working on the third one. Mm -hmm. This one is the event. This is the biggest one ever. Um, I can't discuss the cast yet because everything's not in stone. Yeah. But it's called Cain and Abel. Okay. About these two brothers. One's a top drug dealer, one's a top cop. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know about each other. And they find out. And in, in the Bible, Cain and Abel kill each other. Right. But in this story, they come together and they help each other. And shit's crazy. It's all in rap and it's ill. It's one of the illest things I ever written in my life. Mm -hmm. Where and Russell Simmons uh, made me write it. Wow. Wow. That's dope. That's dope. So, I mean, fast forwarding it to, to now. I mean, 2021, you know, what is Sticky Fingers up to now? Like, where are you at in your journey? Can't right able. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing that next. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's a lot of things. My solo album. I got a, I got a Sticky Fingers mobile app. Mm -hmm. You know, go to your iPhone and press in Sticky, S-T-I-C-K-Y. Mm -hmm. And finger, you should do it too. Load mm -hmm. up my app, Fingers, F-I-N-G-A-Z. Mm -hmm. The first rapper to have a mobile app. Um, it's basically like a, a store, in a sense, you know, mm -hmm. because you could get premium content that you can't get anywhere else, you know? Mm -hmm. What about the NFT? We're putting out an... I don't know when this is coming out. Oh, yeah. When Soon. is this coming out? Next week. Next week. By then, the honest NFT is probably available. It's probably yeah. sold by now. Yeah. Who, who yeah. knows? <laughs> you know? But we're not doing it for the money. Even though there's money involved, we're doing it for the art, you know? Because mm -hmm. um, I like, we like to be the first of everything, mm -hmm. you know? The first rappers to slam dance. I'm the first rapper to be a superhero. Yeah. The first rapper to put out a whole movie all in rap mm -hmm. with A-list stars, you know? Yeah. First rapper to shoot a gun at a uh, performance. <laughs> that, was a hol that was a hologram. Oh, the hologram. First <laughs> rapper to have a hologram, <laughs> a hologram. Shoot, shoot up in the air. Yeah, you know, so, you know, 
it's new shit. What 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 is Sticky listen to now? Like, are you you in tune with the new new cats, the new genre, the you new generation? What? I should say. Not rapper. really. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try to uh, listen more and more. Mm-hmm. It's funny. I had some people on my um studio the other day, mm-hmm. right? And they said, "All you do is keep playing the same songs that you always listen to. Mm-hmm. Why don't you listen to some new shit?" What? All right, cool. Went to YouTube, put up uh, Hip Hop 2021. Yeah. And we start playing all the shit. Yeah. Right? That's what playing, like, this shit's whack. Oh my God. Yeah. I said, hey, do you see why I be listening to this shit I listen to? Because, you know. Yeah. But, you know. So you ain't so you ain't really, as an elder statesman, I mean, an OG in the game. You ain't some really, stuff is good. Yeah. Some stuff is good. It depends. You know, mm-hmm. some stuff is good. You know, some stuff isn't. But who you like? That, I'm curious. It, it, it who hasn't you like? changed. It's always been like that. Yeah. Good music, bad music. For sure, you know? for sure. But I, I don't I'm know curious. who I like. You don't even know them. They, you just fucking. No, 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 no. Not that I don't know them. Yeah. But like, first, I'm not nobody's pom poms, you know, mm-hmm. spokesman. And, you know, like, I like everything and I like nothing at the same time. Yeah. I don't like albums. I be liking songs. I might not even like yeah, that artist. Talk. I like that song. Yeah, real talk. Yeah, one out of ten. You yeah. know? Yeah. Um I mean know? that's kinda that's kinda the flow now anyway. You know what I'm saying? Unless it's an established artist, you know, unless you drag the baby. And, and, and I'm in the middle of making these projects. So mm-hmm. it's all about critiquing myself. Cause uh, uh, after you leave the studio, mm-hmm. you gotta listen to what you did. Right, right. You know, critique it, right. how to perfect it, and then you get tired of listening to all this bang, 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 hip hop. Oh right. shit, damn, right. my bad. It's all good. All this right. crazy hip hop shit. Yeah. So you might listen to some R and B. Yeah. Some soul shit. So yeah. You know. Yeah. The reason I ask, because you know, in 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 rap right now, you have kind of this generational gap. You know what I mean? You got the, the the young niggas against the old niggas and vice versa. You know, and I would, you know, I'm an older cat. I'm, I'm 44, so you know, I come from the same generation you do in terms of music. You know right. what I mean? Um, and it's funny because initially I had my opinions about, you know what I'm saying, the 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 new music or whatever. Right. But um, I had to I had to take a step back and I said, damn, you know, I remember when we swore by rap when I first heard Too Short and N.W.A. and Ghetto Boys. You know, shit. My parents or the older cats, you know, before me that came up on. You know, uh, uh, you know, the Furious Five and Grandmaster mm. Flash and all that. They listening to Ice T and NWA. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, mm. they cussing on record. They talking about all this street shit. You know right. what I mean? So I understood that the music was a revolving door. You know, you know, everybody got they. You know what I'm saying? They just like the ones before them. It was Earth, Wind, and Fire and and soul music and all that. They right. heard rap. They like, what is this bullshit? It ain't gonna be around. Right, 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 you know? right. So That's I went funny. in. I went in with a diplomatic ear. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Kind of like still got turned out. <clears throat> nah, I, I like it. <laughs> okay. I, I tend, I tend to, to 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 like it, man. I listen some to a lot. Some stuff I like, yeah. You know, some stuff is like because I mean, the thing is, they talk. I just don't like when motherfuckers is offbeat. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's an acquired taste. That's the only thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, but you know, I think it's, I think it's, they talking the same shit. I think it's, you know, it's, it's music of their day. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, Like Drake, for instance. Drake is dope. I love Drake. Drake is super dope. Drake bigs us up all the time. Fresno Star specifically. Yeah. Drake got the golden voice. Dog. I when I first uh, heard, but Drake don't fall into that category. I know, but talk about other motherfuckers. But I ain't ain't gonna lie, I didn't like Drake at first for all the wrong reasons Mm. because I just felt like. You know, I judged him. You know what I'm saying? I felt like he didn't embody rap. It's like, okay, dude from Canada, he light skinned. He, you know, I just thought he was soft, just to say what it is. You he know what I mean? He could be soft if you want yeah. to be soft. Yeah, but but once I started listening to the music, I'm right. at the gym and I and I got all that bullshit out of my head. I was like, damn, this dude dope. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it, dope. so I went into it like that. I just started all of them. I just quit judging them and just listening to the music. You know what I right. mean? So I, I was curious because I know a lot of cats my age, they'd be like, man, I don't see how you listen to that shit. Now I still listen to my old school shit. I listen I'm, to all, yeah. Yeah, I'm still I'm still listening to Look, Ice Cube. Death shit gotta be really bad for you for me to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. turn yeah. that shit off. You yeah. know? Yeah. So it gotta be unbearable, you know? Right, right. I right. I, kinda, I mean, I kinda feel like Onyx, like today when I hear like the drill sound, mm-hmm. like like I you feel know, it's like, funny me and Frederick were just talking about that. I feel like that's like it like it's inspired because I'm Regardless of what people want to say, I feel like they still reach back. Right. And, yeah. And like right. when I hear that, and I see some of that Chicago, and even Texas right now got the kind of got the drill sound going on too, like in Dallas, like right. it reminds me of that. On right. It, it, mm-hmm. yeah, if we would do anything, yeah. we can't do trap. We right. can do drill. Right. If anything, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. It'd be right. up our alley. 
Yeah. Right, right. You but know? they embody that now because they embody the rock. Singing, nigga, shit. You can sing? Yeah. Nigga, I'm nice. Yeah. Mo three. Hit something. Who you want me to hit? Hit something. No, no. <laughs> he had to you say you can sing. I'm gonna put... <clears throat> you need some water, nigga? The, the fly was in my water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe later. You got to listen to the album to hear that shit. <laughs> I thought we was going to get something. Now. You I do it. Hear, yeah, I thought you was going to hit a little, little Luther or something. Some yeah. woo or something. <laughs> but um, so, uh, man, listen, here, I know you got to get going, bro, so I ain't going to keep you. But, man, I appreciate you coming to the oh, show. Oh, before we go, yeah. I want to tell everybody, it, it's not out yet, but look out for this show. And we got coming out. It's called 12. All right? I play a psycho-ass cop, right? My name is May Do, because I may do anything. And, and Courtney created the show. She's fucking incredible, yo. Great, yo. Man, you a good nigga, bro. How am I going to forget to plug my own fucking show, right? I, I would have brought it up. You a good nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, here I'm like, okay, I don't want to keep this nigga too long. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, real talk. I mean, and man, listen. I appreciate him, you. Him and Jasmine Lewis. Jasmine Lewis. Shout out to my homegirl, Jasmine She was Lewis. supposed to be here. Yeah. She, she I'm, said, yo, I'm, oh, we were going to book the same day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, you see, I, I he's trying to spread it out so he could get more days in. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, man, and the thing about it with 12 is when when Jazz, I created it just off of, uh, you know, fuck, it's a story that needs to be told. You know what I mean? Just, you know, I wanted some crazy shit. Some right. pulp, like we talked about, Pulp Fiction meets, you know what I'm saying, Bad Boys and all that, Training Day and all right. that shit. And she's like, man, Sticky Fingers would be great for this. As soon as she said it, I said, yo. I said, I'm with it. Let's get him. You know what I mean? And, you know, we find each other on, on Fredro's podcast. Yeah, real talk. So, the podcast. And, and this is the thing. You you kept. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> we, so, we seen each other on Fredro's shit, right? And so, he he met me. He was like, yeah, your name Courtney? He was like, oh, okay. And then I told Jazz. I said, yeah, I met I met Stick on, on Fredro's thing. But remember? Uh, he was like. I don't remember meeting no nigga named Courtney. Oh, and she was like, oh, the big dude. And she was like, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was literally what it was like a week or something. Right. You know what I mean? But that's just funny how God works, right. how the universe works. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because I wouldn't have known that after meeting you on the podcast that a week later we'd be talking about a show. Right. Today. That's L. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But see, you that's what it is. You're a real cat. You wasn't on no bullshit when I met Never you. Because think about that. If it had if we had a rubbed each other the wrong way, that's funny, right? Been like, man, uh, fuck that nigga. No, nigga. Yeah, shit. I ain't doing that. I remember that I'm fuck ass. Drake. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but I want to give you your flowers, you know what I'm saying? That's I what, hope I can smoke them. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. But uh uh that's what the I created the show for. Oh, well. you do got me. You got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still got it? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, with the, uh, you know, I created this show, man, because I wanted to give people like you their flowers while you could smell them. You man. know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, you know, and uh, many times we we wait for people, something to happen to people, like you see with the past and the DMX, rest in peace. Man, they say everything happens in threes, man. It was DMX, right. Black Rob, and then Shaka G, my nigga. Right, like, right, right. You know, but see, that's the, we got to do better. We got to do better. We got to start celebrating people while they're here. You right. know what I'm saying? So that's why everybody that I have on the podcast, man, you know, I, I want to give you your flowers. I want to tell you that me, myself, I appreciate you and personally. got to start living a more healthy lifestyle. Yeah. I, I'm about to make the whole hip-hop world, even, even if only for one day, vegan. All right? Yeah, you, you got Put the bottles down. And stop eating them dead, rotten animals. You got a uh, you got YG playing with it with the veganism. Yeah. RZA, dope. RZA, yeah. I mean, you know me, I'm, I'm over here doing right. Here, vegan. Right? I'm gonna eat my steak and my hamburgers. You know what I mean? Until they say, now. oh, all the food is poisoned. <laughs> it has coronavirus in it. <laughs> you yeah, I heard of mad cows, mad corona. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, man, I just want to give you flowers, bro. I tell you, Thank I appreciate you. you. I appreciate you know that. what I mean? I appreciate what you have contributed to the game. You know, the rap game, the acting game, the the path you have laid for us, you know, to follow for, you know, behind you. You know, you've been an inspiration, bro. And That's you're still right. here. So, you know, I appreciate and stronger you. than ever. Yeah. Focused. Yeah, for sure. Know? And, the, and the fact that you've overcome, that's the biggest thing. You know what I mean? I want to showcase where you started from. And your journey and the fact you've overcome addiction, you know what I mean? Just the ills of the game, the mm -hmm. streets, and you're right. still here, you know, sane and with your facilities and your mind about you. And you're able to be a, a, a testimony, you know what I'm saying, to inspire other people. I got so. kids now, too, so I got to be an example. Yeah, you know real talk. I, 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 I always used to think, you know, fuck uh, being a role model and fuck the world. But when you have your own kids, it's like, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, I guess I gotta behave a little, right? <laughs> what sticky, <laughs> sticky kids like? I bet they turned up, huh? Niggas is crazy. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? One thing that I learned, dog, usually niggas like us, our kids are always square. Mm. You know what I'm saying? My you, kids are bad. Are they? They ain't square? They bad as fuck. They, 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 bad squares. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah man, listen, because me, me and Pete, we talk, we used to laugh about that all the time. We'd be like, man, our kids are so square. They so soft. Mm. You know what I mean? They grow up behind the gate. You know what I mean? They don't have to come up with the environment that we did. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, they have different options. But, you know, that's, that's the mentality, too. Not just, the, you know, environment. Because you could be a, a, a bad bad boy and then fucking private school. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's Them right. the wannabes, though. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They just trying to do it because they trying yeah, to do Yeah, no, my kids, it. I'm going to drop them off in Brooklyn every year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be back for you in a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to let you get up out of here, brother. I appreciate you for stopping through, man. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. All right. Yes, one brother. love, bro. All right. And y'all better kill that fucking fly in his head. I'll be here. Back. Fucking day. I know, right? That nigga yeah. been fucking with us. Hey, All yo. Right. Go buy that new Onyx album, Onyx for Life. <laughs>